What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and another video. If you guys are new here, I wanna welcome you guys, but if you guys have been here before, you'll notice I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different in this video. Might be something that I'll be doing in the future as well, reviews on different bikes, but what I wanna to do today is review my 2022 Ducati Panigale V2. I've had this bike maybe for like five, six months now. I just wanna give you a little bit insight on the specs and features, but also what I personally think about the bike. I've been riding for like the last 11 or so years. So I've ridden different bikes. I just recently came off a of Harley before I bought this, but let's just go ahead, jump right into this Ducati. Before we get into the details guys, I just want to give you one more quick overview of the bike. I obviously went for the Ducati red as opposed to the white with the red accents. I'll toss a picture up there just so you guys can reference if you haven't seen the other one. But Ducati to me is just known for its beautiful red. They did an amazing job with the aesthetics for this. It looks a lot like its big brother, the V4. Obviously it doesn't perform like the V4, but aesthetically it's very beautiful very aggressive and it always turns some heads but let's go ahead and jump into what makes this thing run so what gets this thing going guys is a 955 cc l twin that ducati tossed in here uh, they call it the super quattro it has a nearly 100 millimeter cylinder bore and a very short piston stroke so what that does is cause the bike to love to live in the high rpm high rev range it's not as torquey as the bikes used to be. I've ridden a few other Ducatis and in the low and mid range, it uh, doesn't accelerate as quickly as I thought it would, but with the electronic quick shifter, it has changed everything and it just flies through that six speed gearbox like it's nothing. That being said, with all these changes, it still does feel very similar to the 899. Now, before I got the Ducati a couple months ago, what I'd come off of was a 1200XL Harley-Davidson Sportster. Obviously, it was a completely different beast than the Ducati, but before that, I had a lot of experience on my CBR600RR. Before that, I had a Ninja 250 that I started off on. As I mentioned, I've ridden a lot of my friends' Ducatis, but also their other sport bikes, and nothing really compares to the Panigale. That's primarily because of the seating position. As I mentioned, it's super aggressive. The front uh, throttle and the handlebars, they're very far forward, and very low, while the seat is actually very high up. That just inevitably kills your wrist when you're riding for a long time, or if you're riding slow. Something that I took away from other Ducati riders, it helped a lot was to squeeze the tank with your thighs. That'll take that weight off of your wrist and it definitely changes the game. Other than that, I'll show you guys why it happens in a minute, but you'll always hear from Ducati riders that they run super hot. I thought it was just kind of a thing that they said like, yeah, okay, it's definitely different than other bikes that may have not experienced it, but I did not believe how hot this bike ran. I live down south, so during the summer it was brutal. Now during the winter months, it's been kind of nice because it's been keeping me warm. But under that seat, it definitely gets very hot and I'll show you why. So as you can see right under the seat, there's this little plastic cover, but under that you have part of the exhaust system running right through there. What that does is obviously heat up when the bike is running. It's not a total game changer. I still love the bike. Everyone still loves the Ducatis, but it's definitely something to try out and consider if you're gonna be looking to get a Panigale anytime soon. So to touch more on kind of what the ride is like, I mentioned the riding position is very aggressive, but there is a 4.5 gallon tank on here. When that's full, this bike is around 441 pounds. So it's not on the lightest side, but definitely not extremely heavy. And these BPF forks are amazing. And what Ducati did with them, they have such a wide range of adjustments that you can do with them and adjusting them is really easy. It provides a lot of comfort, but also on the track, it'll hold its own. So real quickly, before I move on to electronics, I just really wanted to touch base on what tires and brakes come standard on the bike. They come with Pirelli Rosso Corsa two tires. 
What's nice about those is that they warm up really quickly. You can take all the sharp turns that you want. You still have that comfort and everything. I've never had a problem with them, but I also don't do any crazy rides. I don't really do track and stuff like that. I just love to ride and these tires are fine. The same thing with Brembo brakes. I've heard different things about them. These are triple disc hydraulic brakes and they work well, but a lot of people say they don't have enough bite. I think that's kind of forgiving because I've had bikes where it just has too much of a bite and I almost feel like I'm going to flip over it. But overall, this is a really great tire and brake package. So I apologize that my foam mount is in the way. I'm gonna squeeze you guys over here. I just wanna show you really quickly. This is where you control everything in the settings menu. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the display. What's really nice about this display is it's the exact same one that's on the V4. I apologize for the glare that I have to kind of get into this angle. But as you guys can see, it's in night mode because it's dark in here. Um, it's in race mode. That's what I like going through. If you hold down that button that I showed you, that's what's going to allow you to go through sport uh, and street or whatever you want to ride in. Uh, once you select the setting menu, that's when you're able to actually adjust um, some of the power modes, the traction control, independently adjust wheelie control. You can mess with the quick shifter, engine brake controls and also the three-way adjustable ABS. Uh, let me press on that. As you can see, it says performance and safety, and just above that it says track and road. Uh, what's nice about that is like, if you wanna go level one, you can disable rear ABS, and that's kind of if you wanna do like slides or lock it up or anything like that. So there's just two more things that I wanna go over, guys. One of them is all this plastic that's on the bike. It just seems kind of cheap. It doesn't feel like the best. And there's a lot of plastic on this bike. The very last thing, the stock exhaust. I'm about to start it in a second and show you guys. This is gonna be a cold start. I might let it run for a while so you can kind of hear when it's warmed up. But the stock exhaust, it's just very non-aggressive for what kind of bike the Panigale is. I think it can be a lot better and the aftermarket ones are just crazy expensive. I might toss that on. I don't know how long I wanna keep the bike. We'll kind of see. There's definitely some things that I've thought about doing to it, but that's for another video, another day. But I'm gonna go ahead, get this bike started so you can see what it sounds like. Cold start, and then when it warms up a little bit. So first off, I'm gonna start the bike. It hasn't been started for a couple of days. It's also really cold out. So I just wanna show you guys what this cold start sounds like. It's been a couple minutes. I'm sure you guys can hear running in the garage. Let's go see what it sounds like when it's been warmed up a little bit. All right guys, so you heard it with the cold start. You heard it after running a little bit. I opened up the garage right now just so I can get these fumes out, but I wanted you guys to hear, like I said, it's not the worst. I just expected a lot more for how aggressive a bike the Panigale is. It's a beast. I thought it was gonna sound a little bit better, but I'm not complaining at all. I mentioned I might toss on an exhaust, do a couple different things to it if I decide to keep it. I have a lot of fun with it, but I don't know if it's worth it. But if you guys like these videos, let me know. I'll do some reviews on some other bikes, maybe build a bike. I thought that'd be really fun. It's a lot easier to work on. I know a lot more about bikes than I do about cars, but. This was fun, it was a nice little change. I can do reviews on my friends' bikes, things like that, maybe try out some different ones. But I was also thinking about maybe starting like a Facebook, Instagram, just so we can all kind of keep in touch. I wanna know what you guys are riding, anything that you're working on, things like that, recommendations. I love hearing your guys' story, anything you guys are suggesting to me. As always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. You guys really helped me out with that, and I'll catch you guys next time.